Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Blender Developer Sneak Peek. My name is Thomas Beck and I'd like to show you this time some cool stuff like the Laplacian Deform modifier, an addition to motion tracking, the Plane Tracker Preview, and introduce a new section, the Rocket Science section. In the Rocket Science section, I'd like to show you some really cool features that made it into Blender since our last developer sneak peek. And we'll start with the Laplacian Deform modifier now. The Laplacian Deform modifier allows you to pose a mesh while you preserve the geometric deta details. So it's more or less a bit like um, a mesh with an armature, but <clears throat> it's much easier and it's, it's more or less a combination of the mesh uh, with an armature and a mesh with a lattice. So maybe it's easier when I, when I show you what it's good for. So let's first create a simple, simple cactus. Cactus? Is that an uh, English word? I hope so. A uh, simple cactus by merging all those vertices at the center. So we only got one vertex. And um, applying a skin modifier like that. And then extruding a bit. So we got a nice shape. So that was not nice. Mm, vertex so like this and maybe some branch around here and some branch around here so we got something like this and let's branch it again like this so that's a really ugly cactus that got some problems here. But all in all, it's good for our demonstration. So first of all, we should apply now the skin modifier. So we got this, um, this structure here. And now we'd like to have this face here moving and we'd like to have all those connected faces and connected vertices move, moving with it. But we don't like to change the, um, the geometry in a way the hook modifier would do that. Let me show you how that would be done with a hook like this. That would be pretty bad. But what we like to have is that we uh, change this, this hook. And why we change this hook? We have all the geometric details preserved. And we can do that with the Laplacian Deform modifier. When we add them, we have to change the anchor vertex group from nothing to the real group. And for that, we have to define a base group that is down there, assign to new group. And we should add all, um, all vertices that are controlling the mesh shape later on. So we assign this one to the active, active group. Maybe we should do another one here. Group assigned to active group and let's add a hook right away and assign one here and a hook too and now we got three hooks now uh, hooks here and the laplacian deform modifier but when we change the hooks now then you see oh there's still nothing happening but when we enter this group here still nothing happening when we enter this group and say bind, then this Laplacian deform modifier looks at all the vertices and all the groups and binds it together and, and tries to solve it. So we could change this one and all details get preserved. So you could very easily then, 
well, that, that was bad. That was bad too. Maybe that's not the right group, is it? <laughs> Let's select all those. Ah, okay, yeah, that's that's uh, that's absolutely that's absolutely right because the hooks are behind the Laplace in the form modifier, but when they are in the right order, then everything is working as it should, and when you are um, not very um, satisfied with this solution then maybe you should um, let the Laplace in the form modifier calculate a bit more and you could do this via the repeat value so he will tries to refine the solution it found and as you can see you could really very easily animate them the hooks now and um, you even didn't need a, the armature th therefore. So that is really very cool for fast and quick animations that you'd like to show to your client and you won't rig, rig it uh, previously or something like that. So that's really cool and a great uh, addition that has been made to the um, Google Summer of Code by Alexander, I think. So thanks for that. That will really improve many workflows, I think. Yeah. So that's it. Let's go to the motion tracking now. For motion tracking, we should switch the layout to the motion tracking. And after that, we see that there is already some footage that I shot, uh, I think, three years ago in my holidays. And that's only a still, but the rules are are the same for moving images like movie files or something like that. So for a plane tracker, for the plane track, we need uh, four markers. So let's just set them to the corners here. They are rounded, so that's bad for the tracker. But as we don't need to track, as we are only demonstrating, it's okay to fake. So, after we set all those markers up, we are selecting all those and say create plane track. And after that we got some um, plane here. And when we select this plane with left mouse button and, um, and adjust those, those corners, then we could match it exactly so that it is this sign replacing. And we would guess now because we say, okay, that should work. And then when we are satisfied with it, then we would go to the compositor. And in the compositor, I would then say, okay, we want to use the nodes. We have an input or movie clip. That is this one. We got our plane tracker, our plane track deform node. That is this one. Our camera and our plane track so all those things are there then we got a mix note that will mix the um, the movie clip with some color and then we got a viewer and when we have a backdrop then and we'll see that this sign has been completely replaced by the color. So that would be the normal way. But since Sage is working constantly to improve the tracker, we now have a new option here. And this option is, uh, where is this option? Uh, uh, I have to look at this. It's under, Plane track, image, viewer result, for example, or anything else that you defined as a texture. So you could easily just create a new texture in Blender and then use the render result, the viewer node, or some other texture to make this deform and 
and show in real time like this. So it's very easy now to place and deform a plane track. So thanks Sergey, that is really improving my workflow a lot since we deal very often with um, plane tracking stuff. That is really cool. And apart from that, when you'd like to uh, see the original footage below this, um, this mapped plane, then you would simply enter a lower opacity value here, like this, and then you would see the neon sign below. So that will conclude the motion tracking thing. And the next thing is the um, rocket science section, the new section that I introduced in the beginning. And I'm really happy to show you seven, I think seven new features now in a quick manner. So let's start. The first thing is the Bevel modifier. As I said last time, the Bevel modifier didn't have all the options that the Bevel operator had, like this one, the profile option, uh, let's increase the segment count, the profile option, and that was really missing. But since a few days, we have all those options in the Bevel modifier too. So you could easily say, I like to have seven segments with the profile like that. The next thing I'd like to show you is a new option in the build modifier. So let's say we got a cube here, a cube that is um, subdivided several times like this and then we have to sort those faces, sort, cursor distance, faces, and apply a build modifier. What you would see here is the mesh is getting built as normal, but when you like to have the mesh not built but destroyed by the time, then you could now say, I'd like to have that reversed. And so it's reversing this operation. That is very cool for motion graphics too. And so that is a welcomed addition. The next thing is working in the node editor. When you got several nodes there, like let's say we got a plane here like to have several nodes like the mix node, the texture attribute node and so on and so on and so on and then you'd like to position a node then it's oftentimes when you are not that close like I am now really hard so there would be it would be cool when there was a way to hide this node or to, to collapse this node while dragging and that is now possible. So when we have a, let's say mix shader and we are dragging them now then we could hit H and hide it while dragging so it gets out of our view and we could exactly see oh okay here is the node connector and the node connection and put them on here. So that is really cool. A uh, welcomed edition too from Monique. Thanks for that too. Apart from that, we got some cosmetic changes too, like this, uh, this tap design that is a bit differently than before, but we are working on it. I know that it's not perfect, but um, we see more improvements, I think, right before the release and after the release because then we got more time to do deeper changes but uh, we are working on it so that is the first thing the second thing is 
um, when you got um, a macref edit uh, dope sheet and you are inserting location keyframes at different positions, then it is possible always, it was always possible to mark some keyframes at uh, as um, a breakdown or as an extreme and the color changed then. So this was the normal one and this was an extreme and now let's um, set this one to uh, oh, a breakdown. So all those colors are now the themable and so you are not limited to only those blue and those uh, purple thing. So just define whatever color you like. And the last thing I'd like to show you is some success story from one of our viewers because he was making us, m making us aware of some flaw we got in Blender in the uh, current development build. Um, he was doing something like this. He was having um, a mesh. Let's create some mesh with an armature first and quick. So some snaky thing here. Then apply the skin modifier. Create an armature with it and then apply it so and when you are in post mode now and you are rotating or doing something with the armature then you see okay there was an automatic weighting already and when you'd like to see the weight the weights of this um, this mesh then you would go to the weight paint mode and select those little bones and previously the lists in this bones the bone vertex groups the list item didn't change when you were selecting some new bones so his only possibility was earlier in Blender to look at the naming field but as we removed the naming field, he couldn't see what bone vertex group was currently selected. And so I talked with, with uh, Bastion and Bastion implemented this feature. Whenever you click on a bone now, then the selected group is highlighted and fo focused. So you only uh, you always will see the um, currently selected item in every list in Blender. So that is a really cool feature and um, our viewer was really amazed to see that this is it has been implemented that fast. Yeah, that was it. So with this feature I'd like to conclude my developer sneak peek for now. Uh, I think I'm far over my 10 uh, minutes limit and I hope that you had a lot of fun with all those new features. It was a lot in this week, but I think it's well worth the effort. And as always, when you'd like to subscribe, just add us on YouTube, on Twitter or on Google+. We are always very happy to see so many nice comments and so many good input. So keep on uh, planning and we'll see us next time. Bye.